You're watching Inside Automotive with Jim Fitzpatrick. Hey everyone, Jim Fitzpatrick with CBT News. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Today on Inside Automotive, I'm joined by John Fairchild, who's a high performance fixed ops coach and the president of Fairchild Automotive Solutions and Rusty Stewart, parts and service director at Aikens Ford. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for taking the time out of your schedule to join us here on CBT News. I know the, the world wants to know what's making uh, Aikens Ford tick and uh, make so much money out there. You guys are doing a great job. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, John, let me ask you first, uh, and we'll, we'll kick it off here. Um, dealers are saying that you know to get people training, and that's, that's your area of expertise, to get them trained right now is at an all-time uh, high in terms of importance because the people that have come into the automotive industry in a post-COVID world don't really know the real industry. You know, It's been like shooting fish in a barrel not just in the sales department, but also in the service department, because people have, you know, the lines have been long and it takes a long time to get an appointment today. And however, these people have not necessarily been trained and they don't know the real business that we're back into now. Talk to us about that. Ain't that the truth? You know, um, Jim, that's a great point. And, and here's what I see in the real world is, is I'll, I'll liken it to this. If I whisper something in Rusty's ear and we got a room full of people, comes back to me, it's going to be something completely yeah, different. Of and guess what? We're kind of putting people to shadow other people in our organization just by necessity right. that may not be doing the whole process. That's right. And as you know, as well as I, in this industry, we've all heard the expression, nobody trained me. Haven't you? Right. You probably said that before, That's right? right? Yeah, and it is true. And so what's happened is and by virtue of, like you said, with COVID, we've been short staffed or we put people in that position that have no training and they get habituated to oftentimes, unfortunately, taking shortcuts. Yeah. 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 They don't even know they're taking shortcuts because they were never taught the long route and the correct route. Right. Talk to me about that, Rusty. Well, and then piggyback on what John just said, uh, all too often the, the training ends up being uh, the form of it being the predecessor that may not have been doing it very well to start with. And now they were put with that person to teach them what they know. And it may not have been the best information the whole time. So they pick up the bad habits of the predecessor that um, probably shouldn't have been the case to, to start with. So by having a formalized training program and being able to establish consistency and uh, getting those processes in place, uh, not only breaks those old habits, uh, but establishes the right ones to begin with. Sure. What do you say to the dealer that says, well, I hear what you're saying, Rusty, but now we're going to spend all this time and money training that individual. and We don't even know if they're going to stay. Why don't we wait 90 days or 120 days and then put them into training? Mm, yeah, that's a that is a good point. And it is sometimes hard to invest the time, uh, especially in this industry, because it's so fast paced and it's so demanding. Uh, but it is just that it is an investment. And. I, I would hate to think that uh, I was going to wait 90 days to teach somebody the right way to do something because the damage that could be done in 90 days to not only themselves, but to those around them and our customers, um, right. they deserve better than that. Uh, our employees do and our customers certainly do. So 90 days is a long time of doing it the wrong way. <laughs> Amen. That's exactly right. And uh, to your point, it could cost you a fortune in those customers that go, well, never going back there again. You know, their, their new guy screwed this whole deal up. Nobody's trained them yet. And, uh, you know, we're, we're practicing with real live rounds of ammunition when that is the case, right? Yeah, you know, perfect point there uh, to segue into what I was going to say, Jim, is, is today we're doing role play with service advisors. So I've got a senior advisor and myself are, are getting the pitch from the uh, advisors as though they were pitching to a customer. Yeah. And just like you said, otherwise you're playing with live ammunition. Yeah. We got to set up a scenario where we're practicing amongst ourselves and then it kind of becomes second nature and I can execute it without really having to think every moment of it. And now I can focus on my customer. Sure. Sure. Where's the best place to do that kind of training? Is it at the dealership at a classroom or is it in the in, right there in the service drive? I think you touched on it, um, uh, Rusty, or maybe it was you, John, that said, you know, kind of a shadowing, you know, hey, stick with this person yeah. and just follow what they do and they'll show you the ropes and meanwhile, they're teaching you all the bad habits that they know and all the shortcuts, so to speak. But um, where, where should that training be done, John? 
I think it's a it's a, a mix of, of different things. OK, so we do all three here and of, of the things I'm going to explain is we do a off site classroom workshops. So we get people off campus okay. and do some formal training where they can be amongst their peers, be um, outside of the influence of, of so many pressures and things yeah, that point. they're trying to pay attention to that's happening. And so that's one element of it. Second element of it is like I was just explaining, we've got a, a classroom setting here at the dealership mm -hmm. where we just pull them in off of the drive and do some interaction back and forth. Okay. And then lastly, um, in the drive with live customers and live repair orders. Mm -hmm. Now, video can also supplement some of those stuff, some of those things, but I think video is a supplement. It's a useful tool to use with other forms of training. Sure, sure. Um, Rusty, where does the where does where does tomorrow's um, uh, service writers or service advisors come from? Is it is it something that you where where do you typically find those individuals? Yeah, Rusty, I, I, I don't put a I don't put a lid on it. It can come. They can come from anywhere. Um, I've found some of the best advisors being anyone from doing a. Uh, a job in the food industry, whether it be wait tables, that's usually a good place. Hospitality is a great place to find someone because they're used to the understanding of how important it is to put customers first and to uh, prioritize them. Um, sure. At the medical industry, um, the, the great thing about our business is that it can accommodate almost any personality and almost any walk of life. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something for everyone. And in terms of an advisor in particular, uh, anybody that's customer facing, if they have a great personality, we can teach them the rest. You know, sure. what we can't teach are certain things like being able to care about what they're doing, having work ethic that uh, shows through their efforts every day. And and as far as the technical expertise, that's definitely something that we would prefer to teach them in a lot of cases. Yeah, yeah. No, and, and, and if I may piggyback off of that, that's a perfect point is that, you know what, we've got a technical staff. They're called technicians. Yeah. Right. Right. And so there's no shame in me as a service advisor not knowing something that's extremely technical technical let's face it even top level technicians are constantly training and constantly learning new things so me as a service advisor i don't necessarily have to be technically minded mm -hmm. what i do have to have is just like rusty was saying is that element of actually caring if i care what i'm doing i can learn anything right and right. guess what exactly the opposite is true sure sure you know where i had some success when i was running dealerships was actually those men or women that came in to sell vehicles but they just weren't cut out for the hard the harder you know sell and um but the they time. were great employees they came in on time they were presented themselves nicely to to the customers that came in they just couldn't close per se on a car deal um but they had all of the other qualities that you'd look for and the characteristics in a, in what would be a good associate for the company so I'd often have, before we let that person go, because they might have only sold five or six cars a month, month in, month out, um, I'd always have the fixed ops director you know, interview them. Because we, I, I can't tell you how many times we've taken somebody that might have only sold four or five cars a month, turned them into a service advisor and, and offered the job to them. And man, they just flourish. I mean, I know a few of them that are fixed ops directors today in dealerships doing very well. And, um, uh, have you have you considered that, or is that something you've done before? Uh, I know we have for sure. Yeah, uh, there's been several cases where we found the the better seat on the bus, as it said, uh, for people. I've actually even seen it go the other direction. I, I yeah. actually have a person here now that's does really well in our sales department that actually came from the parts department. Yeah, so there you go. You never know. That's right. Yeah, and, and yet, you know, in so many times the dealership, at least when I was running them, they're in silos. You know, service never talked to sales, and sales didn't yeah. like service for whatever reason. You know, I mean, you could cut it with a knife, and you'd never hit either one of them. But but the reality is, is that you've got people that are on board already in the company. They've already passed the tests, and they've already gone through the the you know the background checks and everything else, and they could be good rock solid employees. Now, the person that comes in late every day and leaves early, you don't know where they are at lunchtime. That's going to happen in service well. So there's no sense moving those people 
people over. But uh, right. to your point, yeah, it can flow both ways. So maybe for the GMs and dealers that are listening, before you let that good person go, I say good person in the sense that they've got the right characteristics, they're just not your star salesperson. They're not getting to you know, 10, 12, 15 cars a month. They're getting their, you know, maybe, maybe they're struggling getting five or six cars a month out for the last 120 days. You don't know what to do with them. You can't get them going in terms of sales. They might make a great employee somewhere else in the dealership, right? Jim, you're preaching to the choir. And, you know, um, in particular, one of the best service advisors I've ever known, we tongue in cheek called him a sales reject. <laughs> right? He couldn't there make you it go. in sales. Right. Right. But he's the best service advisor you ever met. Yeah. And one of the elements with salespeople, too, is, is if you got somebody in there that's a family man, and you know as well as I do, the hours a yeah. salesperson has got to put in. That's right. That's they're right. looking for something perhaps that might be a little more stable. 100%. That have an element of salary yep. in it that isn't so sales focused, but also the hours. So they're, they're yeah. at home with their family when their family's home. That's right. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a very good point. Let's uh, switch gears a little bit and now talk to about a point that is very near and dear to every dealer's heart and fixed ops director's heart, and that is technicians. I don't, I don't know what this industry is going to do in, uh, to, to find more, uh, you know, technicians. What, what do you do, Rusty? I mean, obviously, you've got to have some availability there at times, and you, you must be pulling the hair out of your head just trying to get people to, you know, look, finding people to get in there. Yeah. Um, well, we're no different than everybody else. We definitely need more. Yeah. Uh, what we do is uh, we, we do everything we possibly can. Uh, we don't just uh, advertise that we're hiring for technicians. We try to be as proactive as possible. We uh, developed our own internal program to uh, teach and train technicians. Uh, there's a curriculum grow involved. Up. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we refer to it as the TDP, the Technician Development Program. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we were inspired by another dealer that actually did the same thing. It worked very well for them. Uh, mm -hmm. A good friend of mine, uh, Ed, down at Beaux-Arts, he does that. And okay. I was very instrumental in showing me uh, some of the things that worked well for him. We've taken it, uh, tweaked it a little bit more to our own liking, and okay. we've had good success with it. We've had about four right now that's graduated and have been doing well independently uh, on their own now. Um, Right now, I've got six in the program that are learning and going through the process. Um, we also team with a lot of uh, trade schools that are around our area. Um, I have a person that's uh, his his job is to represent us and be the liaison for us in the schools, and uh, also get involved. We all do, uh, everywhere from the ownership down to uh, the technician level. That's great. Uh, we uh, we host tours for the schools. We do anything we can. We uh, sponsor them. Um, there's no limit to what we're willing to do to try to grow yeah. our technician staff uh, and improve the staff that we have already. Hey, what? tell me some of the age, the tenure of some of the technicians you guys have. Oh, I've got techs here right now that have been in the business uh, 36 you. years. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, yeah, we've got three techs that have been here 30 plus years. Oh, my gosh. And, wow. Absolutely. That is, and, that's and, crazy. And Mike, Mike, it is crazy, but it just goes to speak to the culture. Yeah. And, you know. People don't really want to leave a place if it's if it's serving them. That's right. um, but I got a couple of things to say about technicians is obviously, yeah, you can't go to the technician factory and order no, kind of right. technique, right? And he's going to show up tomorrow. Right. And, um, you know, the other thing is that you hit on is, yeah, you got to grow your own. Yep. And give those people increasing responsibilities and opportunities to grow. But I also going to say something controversial that I would uh, would appreciate if anybody listening could challenge themselves on this is that if you're not at a hundred percent productivity yeah work on that as well oh, yeah absolutely because it's 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 kind of telling you maybe i don't need a technician i need to work on yeah, being right. more productive with the with the ones that i have that's right it's a very good point i i interviewed a, a dealer out in california and um he took his message about the culture of the store and maybe the longevity of the technicians in your case and took it to social media and did TikTok videos and did videos for the other social media platforms where they actually got on and they said, hey, I'm Bob Johnson. I've been with, you know, in this case, um, you know, uh, of Aikens Ford for, you know, 30 years and couldn't be happier and these guys care well, about you and, idea. you know, so on and so forth and just released all these different uh, technicians and their stories out there, and uh, and it worked very very well. Other people, other technicians saw it as well as other people that wanted to become technicians, and 
It, uh, and, and by the way, it was free. It didn't, you know, social media, as you know, is free oh, unless you're yeah. going to sponsor some of it. But uh, it was really something as to the success that they had uh, taking that message in, you know, real with real people. I said real people, but real technicians that worked at their store and, and asked them all to do videos. And then their social media director made sure it made made sure that was all pushed out there on uh, the platforms. and. They said that they hired three or four different technicians over the course of a 60 day period of time be just because of that campaign. So for dealers that are watching, it might be a good idea for you. No, and, and you know great. what? Thank you for that because I was just taking notes about what you're saying. Yeah. And yeah, I'm gonna challenge Rusty to do the same thing because he's got long tenured uh, employees. I think you're yeah. running 375 or something fixed op employees here. Wow. Yeah, total, total company wide is about 415. So. Oh my gosh. So, you know, People for a long tenure can explain to people who are looking for a home. That's a fantastic idea, Jim. Yeah, no question, for sure. Well, yeah, John Fairchild, high performance fixed ops coach and president of Fairchild Automotive, joined by Rusty Stewart, who's parts and service director at Aikens Ford. Thank you for joining us and thank you all for watching Inside Automotive exclusively right here at CBT News and now streaming on Roku and Apple TV. So that puts you in 70 million households. So thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you for Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for having us. Thanks for watching Inside Automotive with Jim Fitzpatrick.